Hey, up in Duck YouTube, welcome to A History of Your Club, episode four of series one. To, I'm going to start today's episode by, first of all, just mentioning how happy I am that the project Big Picture has been voted down. This would have totally ruined football as a whole, and if you don't know what it is, just Google it online. It's just an absolute outrage that they could even consider doing such a thing. Um, talking about a Premier League club at the moment, we'll talk about Burnley's history. Uh, the long, illustrious wins of titles, founding the league, I think they may have won the FA Cup as well. Let's uh, hop right into it then. So, the club was founded on the 18th of May, 1882, by members of a rugby team, Burnley Rovers, who voted for a shift to association football since other sports clubs in the area had changed their codes to football. The suffix Rovers was dropped a few days later, and the team played their first ever match on the 10th of August against local side Burnley Wanderers at home ground Calder Vale, on which they won 4-0. In February 1883, the club was invited by Burnley Cricket Club to a pitch adjacent adjacent to the cricket field at Turf Moor, where it has remained since. That same year saw them win their first ever silverware, the Dr. Dean Trophy, a a knockout competition between amateur clubs in the Burnley area. By the end of 1883, the club had turned professional and had signed many Scottish players who were regarded as best footballers. As a result, Burnley refused to join the Football Association and its FA Cup, since the association barred professional players. In 1884, they led a group of 35 other clubs in the formation of the breakaway British Football Association to challenge the supremacy of the FA. This threat of of secession led to a an FA rule change in July 1885, allowing professionalism, which made the new body redundant. Burnley made their first appearance in the FA Cup in 1885-86. However, most professionals were prohibited entry due to the FA rules that year. So they fielded their reserve side and lost 11-0 to Darwin Old Wanderers. In October 1886, Turf Moor became the first professional ground to be visited by a member of a royal family when Prince Albert attended a match between Burnley and Bolton Wanderers. The club was among the 12 founding members of the Football League in 1888-89 and one of the six of which which were based in Lancashire. William Tate became the first player to score a league hat-trick in the second match when his three goals gave Burnley their inaugural win in the competition. In 1889-90, they claimed their first Lancashire Cup after beating local rivals Blackburn Rovers in the final. Nicknames at this point were Tufties, Moorites or Royalties, as a result of their ground's name and the Royal Connection. Burnley were relegated to the second division for the first time in 1896-97, but the team won the division the next season. Only two of 13 matches were lost before promotion was gained through a four-team playoff series called Test Matches. Although the last game against first division club Stoke was controversial, the tie finished 0-0 as both needed only a draw for a top flight place. It was later renamed The Match Without a Shot at Goal. The Football League soon withdrew the test match system in favour of an automatic promotion and relegation and expanded both divisions from 16 to 18 clubs after a motion made by Burnley. They were relegated again in 1899-1900 and found themselves at the centre of controversy again, <laughs> it seems like, when their goalkeeper, Jack Hillman, attempted to bribe opponents Nottingham Forest in the last match of the season. 
It is possibly the earliest recorded case of match fixing in football. And the side continued to play in the second division and even finished in bottom place in 1902-03. But they were re-elected as the club got into financial difficulties. Harry Windle was named chairman in 1909, after which the club's finances turned around. He appointed manager John Horworth in 1910, who changed the club's colours from green to the claret and blue of Aston Villa, the then First Division champions. As Horworth and the Burnley committee believed it might bring a change of fortune... <laughs> In 1912, they won promotion to the first tier and reached the FA Cup semi-final. Burnley won their first major honour the following year, beating Liverpool in the 1914 FA Cup final. Bert Freeman scored the only goal as Burnley became the first club to defeat five top-tier sides in one cup season. Tommy Boyle became the first captain to receive a trophy from a reigning monarch of King George V. The team finished second to West Bromwich Albion in 1919-20, before winning their first ever First Division Championship in 1920-21. Burnley lost the opening three games, but went unbeaten in the following 30 league games, which was at that time an English record. Hall's death in 1924 was followed by a steady deterioration of their position which culminated in demotion in 1929-30. They struggled in the second tier and avoided a further relegation in 1931-32 by only two points. The years through to the outbreak of the Second World War were characterised by an uninspiring league finishers. So in the first season of the post-war league football, Burnley gained promotion through second place and reached the 1947 FA Cup final. Uh, they were, in fact, defeated by Charlton Athletic after extra time. The team's defence was nicknamed the Iron Curtain since they only conceded 29 goals in 42 league matches. Burnley finished third in their first season back in the top flight as they began to assemble a squad capable for competing at four of competing at four honours. Alan Brown was appointed manager in 1954 and Bob Lord, you may have heard of him from the Bob Lord Trophy, uh, became chairman a year later. The club became one of the most progressive around under their tenures. Burnley were one of the first to set up a purpose-built training centre at Gorefield. And they became renowned for their youth policy and scouting system, which yielded many young talents. Brown also introduced short corners and free kick routines. In 1958, Burnley player Harry Potts was appointed manager. His squad mainly revolved around the duo of Captain Jimmy Adamson and Jimmy McElroy, the team's playmaker. Uh... A playmaker is basically somebody who is like a striker during them days. Um, or midfielder, I think is more probably attacking midfielder. Potts often employed the then unfashionable 4-4-2 formation, and he implemented a total football playing style. Burnley clinched a second first division title in 1959-16. Uh, top the table until the last match was played out. The squad cost only thirteen thousand pounds, which is only equivalent in today in for, for three hundred thousand pounds. And in transfer fees, eight thousand pounds on Mickleroy in nineteen fifty, and five thousand pounds on left back Alex Elder in nineteen fifty nine. The other players came from their youth academy, with eighty thousand inhabitants. The town of Burnley became the smallest ever to have, well, not ever, I think there's one solution modern, but at that time, to have an English first-tier champion. They travelled to the USA after the season ended to participate in the, in the International Soccer League, the first modern international American football tournament. 
The following season, Burnley played in European competition for the first time in the 1960-61 European Cup. They defeated former finalists Stade de Reims in the first round, but went out against Hamburger SV in the quarter-finals. The team finished the 1961-62 First Division as runners-up to newcomers Ipswich Town after winning only two of the last 13 matches and had a run to the FA Cup final but lost against Tottenham Hotspur. Adamson was named for Football Writers Award Football of the Year, however, with Mickleroy as runner-up. Not, nonetheless, although far more from a two-man team, the controversial de- departure of Mickleroy to Stoke City in 1963 and Adamson's retirement in 1964 coincided with a decline in fortunes. Even more damaging was the impact of the abolition of the maximum wage in 1961, which meant clubs from small towns like Burnley could no longer compete financially with towns from, well, from side, sorry, from bigger towns and cities. The team managed, however, to retain a first division place throughout the decade and even finished third in 1965-66 to qualify for the 1966-67 Intercities Fairs Cup, despite not being a city. Uh, Potts was replaced by Adamson as manager in 1970 and after a 12-year spell, Adams, well, sorry, after he had a 12 year spell, sorry, Adamson hailed his squad as the team of the 70s, but he was unable to, to halt the slide as relegation followed in 1970 71. Burnley won the second division title, though, in 1972 73, and were invited to play in the 1973 FA Charity Shield as a result where they emerged as winners, in fact, against Manchester City. In 1975, the team were victims of one of the great FA Cup shocks of all time, when Wimbledon, at that time in the Southern League, won 1-0 at Turf Moor. Adamson left the club in January to... In 19, January 1976, a relegation from the First Division followed later that year. During this period, a drop in home attendances combined with an enlarged debt which forced Burnley to sell star players such as Martin Dobson and Leighton James, which caused a rapid decline. The team were relegated to the third division for the first time in 1979-80 under the management of former Burnley player Brian Miller who returned to the second tier as champions in 1981-82. However, this return was short-lived and lasted only one year. Managerial changes continued to be made in the search for success. Miller was replaced by Frank Casper in early 1983. He by John Bond before the 1983-84 season. And Bond himself was replaced by John Benson a season later. Bond was the first manager since Frank Hill in 1948 to 1954 without a previous playing career at the club. He was criticised by the fans for selling expensive players, increasing Burnley's debt and for selling young talents, Lee Dixon, Brian Laws and Trevor Stephen. Benson was in charge when Burnley were relegated to the fourth division for the, fir- for the first time in 1984-85. The team did avoid relegation to the football conference, the highest level of non-league football, on the last day in 1986-87, after they won against Orient, now Leighton Orient, and their rivals drew or lost. The board had attempted to purchase almost bankrupt Welsh club Cardiff City and relocate it to Turf Moor if Burnley were relegated in what would have been the Football League's first franchise operation. I find that a complete ridiculous thing, if that even happened, though, to be fair. In 1988, Burnley played Wolverhampton Wanderers in the final of the Associate Members' Cup, but lost 2-0. The match was attended by 80,000 people, 
a record for a match between two sides from the fourth tier. By the way, the Associate Members Cup is now the EFL Trophy. The team won the fourth division in 1991-92 under the management of Jimmy Mullen. He had succeeded Frank Casper in October 1991 and won his first nine league matches as manager. By winning the fourth tier, the Clarets became the only, only the second club to win all four professional divisions of English football after Wolverhampton Wanderers. Burnley won the second division playoffs in 1993-94 and gained promotion to the second tier. Relegation followed after one season. And in 1997-98, only a last-day victory over Plymouth Argyle ensured a narrow escape from relegation back into the fourth tier. Chris Waddle, which you may know from uh, being a pundit on at Five Live, was a player manager that season with his assistant, Glenn Roder. But their departures and the appointment of Stan Hernand that summer saw the club start to make further progress. They finished second in 1999-2000 and were promoted to the second tier. During the 2001 and 2002 se seasons, uh, Burnley emerged as serious contenders for a promotion playoff place. And in early 2002, financial problems caused the collapse of ITV Digital. This brought the club close to administration again, as it did with many, in fact. Turnit was sacked in 2004 after he avoided relegation with a squad composed of many loanees and some players who were not entirely fit. Steve Cotterill was then appointed as manager, but was replaced in November 2007 by Owen Coyle. The 2008-09 season, which was Coyle's first full season in charge, ended with promotion to the Premier League as Sheffield United were defeated in the Championship playoff final which meant a return to the top flight after 33 years. Burnley also reached the semi-final of the League Cup for the first time in over 25 years, but were beaten on aggregate by Tottenham in the last minutes of the second leg. Promotion made the town of Burnley the smallest town to host, Premier, to host the Premier League. The team started the season well and became the first newly promoted side of the competition to win their first four home games. However, Coyle left the club in January 2010 to manage local rivals Bolton Wanderers. He was replaced by Brian Laws, but the team's form plummeted and they were relegated after a single season. Laws was dismissed in December 2010 and in fact was replaced by Eddie Howe most notably formerly of Bournemouth, who was succeeded by current manager Sean Dyche in October 2012. In his first full season in charge, Dyche guided Burnley back to the Premier League in 2013-14 on a tight budget and with a small squad. The team went down after one season, but won the championship title on their return in 2015-16, when they equated their 2013-14 club record of 93 points and ended the season with a run of 23 league games undefeated. The st side stayed up this time, to be fair, and the 2016-17 season ended with them in 16th place. The club completed construction of the Barnfield Training Centre that season, which replaced Gorefob. Daesh was involved in the training grounds design and had willingly tailored his transfer budget as both he and the board focused on the club's infrastructure and future. Burnley finished 7th in 2017-18, which meant qualification for the 2018-19 Europa League and returned to European football after 51 years. The team failed to reach the group stage as they were eliminated in the playoff round by Greek club Olympiakos. So that was the history of Burnley Football Club. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you on this Sunday, hopefully, for um, the best championship signings that you have made over this transfer window. Goodbye for now.